Hello everyone, in this video we'll look at this framework called Llama Index. You might have heard of Llama Index uh, in a lot of large language model contexts, um, connecting to OpenAI and even other terms like Langchain, etc., which we'll get into later on. Um, but Llama Index is simply a framework which helps you connect your data to a large language model. It kind of helps in augmenting uh, the last language model. And of course, uh, we learned about a retrieval augmented generation, uh, where we augmented a large language model uh, by retrieving the data and we used Pinecone as a vector database, right? A vector database. Um, and we use this um, to augment whatever is generated by the last language model. And Llama Index kind of also can do uh, what a vector database is, but not as much as um, a vector database which is specialized to do this like Pinecone. So if that is confusing, a Llama Index is a framework which just has some applications. All right, uh, let me just go here, yeah. So first of all, it has these uh, data connectors. Um, which is like Llama Hub, that's what they call it. And it connects your existing data, like any of it. It can be um, it can be in the form of APIs, like if you ask uh, Slack or Notion or any of that, they might give you some data, like which is like structured in, in the form of an API. But that can also be taken in, like using the data connectors uh, in Llama Index. You can also have unstructured data or uh, structured data just like in vector databases, you can uh, load any, any any of these kinds of data into Llama Index. But you can do even more cooler things like converting a normal query into an SQL query, like when the query is asked, like if you ask a natural language query in just English, it can translate it into a SQL query and then retrieve data, which is based on an SQL database. It can do a lot, lot of these things, but yeah, it's, it's specialized in all these three things. Uh, the first is the data connectors. We'll get into uh, more detail into that. And it helps you indice the data, which we saw in vector databases too, that it helps you index the data for different use cases. Like, um, yeah, it just indexes and stores the data. And it also gives you a query interface, um, which you might want to use sometimes. Like if you have a data stored and then you want to just retrieve it, you can, you can directly feed in a query into it and then retrieve it. All right. Um, and it has a lot of integrations with uh, other databases too. And it can also integrate with uh, other things like Langchain, which we'll get to next, um, which when used with Llama Index is able to do even more because you have something to do with the data what we got. And we can do a lot of processing in between. Uh, so you have the last language model and uh, you have Llama Index. And you can have something else too, so that there is some kind of a flow in between. Like you can send the data, you can retrieve the data from Llama Index, um, and then you can do something with it. And you can ask something to the LLM, you can take take things back. And all of that things can be done with Langchain, but we won't go into Langchain now. Uh, we'll focus mainly on Llama Index. And you can even do things like uh, compose graphs, etc., which we didn't uh, get to, like there is, some data which can be stored as uh, in, in the form of graphs which is also quite useful but it is quite advanced um, we'll skip that but you can interface with any other kind of data and it's quite useful all right let me go here so yeah the first thing uh, what llama index can do is loading it can load in a variety of format yeah there are um, 160 plus data source and formats which can be directly integrated to um, a large language model using Llama Index. And you should note that one of the main problems with a uh, simple large language model is things like hallucinations and not knowing what an ex what data exactly is and just provide just giving the user extra data. We saw these in some of our previous videos too. And it's a huge problem. And it's of utmost necessity that we have uh, some kind of a link between the last language model and our data corpus. And uh, this gap is filled with Llama index. And uh, most of the things what you want to do in between here can be done using uh, Llama index. All right. Um, 
let's just take a quick look at this notebook all right just uh, install those packages i think i've already run these so let's just look at the data connectors so we'll just load these uh, pages from wikipedia okay and like in the vector database video we'll just index these um, these documents and then we can just directly retrieve it like we ask the query engine what how many people live in berlin and you can just get a response and then they can just directly get it from there so it's quite quite simple we just directly import it uh, we just load the data we index it and then we can just query it it's it's a simple thing uh, of course in pinecone we do this but and there's a lot of control and lots of scalability and all of that and you can use pinecone um, when you have more advanced things to do with the last language model but like a basic query functionality is still inbuilt in this even if you don't want to directly use it um, but it's uh, still there you can even query multiple uh, documents in that manner like if you go here okay here uh, we are querying like three documents we have uh, these three uber documents this is uber's financials so we'll just uh, get the top three elements from there and then we have okay we have a description given here so now we have so this uh, sub question query engine it generates like a query plan like it will just uh, send a sequence of queries and get the final answer right so if you just query like analyze uber's revenue growth or the latest two quarter filings um so you can see that it generate it generates two sub questions like it asks this thing and also what's the growth of um, the quarter ending june 2022 and september 2022 and it gets uh, those two answers yeah Just waiting for that to run, but it's okay. Okay, we'll get to Ruta in a bit. So yeah, so loading is the first thing we looked at, and uh, the next thing is indexing. So it can just index whatever we got, like um, so that when we query it, it is in the correct positions, like we saw in vector databases. Um, and this indexing can be done just using lama index and that's the index in lama index that's a, that's one of the main things what we can do with lama index and we can even integrate it with other vector stores so over here we have all of these vector stores like we have uh, pinecone we have v8 we have chroma, chroma db all of that and we can just directly integrate it with lama index um of course lama index has its own uh, like ability to store things and retrieve and all of that but it's just there so that it exists as a complete package and we can use all of these vector vector stores and databases separately too so yeah it can even integrate with langchain and so we don't need to just forcibly fit pinecone with open ai and try to directly do something which which you can do because this is just a vector database and we have uh, the large language model and this can control all of these things together so if we use lama index and integrate it with it, um, it it's much more useful and you can even integrate it with langchain like i said before and even any other app framework like for example you have you have to build something like a chatbot for uh, a, a restaurant like it's it's a kind of an example we saw earlier uh, for this if you want a vector store we can use that too and we can have uh, s some other app link to it also and we can do all of that um, with the llama index framework mediating through all of these right um, we will look at how to practically use this um, in our upcoming videos and yeah let me 
Okay, I, I won't go into details about indexing or any of this uh, since it's just an intro video to this. But yeah, it, it, it just helps you have this vector store index and you can just take any document data you give, split it into parts and then you store it and then uh, we can just directly retrieve it. And just, okay. So indexing is one of the main things and that's why it is called Lama Index. That's one of the reasons. And uh, of course, we can query it too. You can even uh, have even more complicated queries uh, created here. And, and I also wanted to show you something called routing, which, uh, which you can do. Like if you, let's say if you, you can define a custom query engine that can root to either SQL database or a vector database. So, so sometimes the query we need, you need to translate it into an SQL database uh, so that you can access things much more easily. So let's uh, try that. We'll just run these imports. Um, so we'll create a schema and we have like 100 tables. Um, so we'll just create that and we'll uh, add these. Right. So we have uh, Toronto, uh, Tokyo and Berlin and the populations in the countries. All right. So we just insert that with the C. So if we have a uh, select star from city states, if you know a bit of SQL, uh, this is going to give you all of that. Right. Uh, it's going to return these three elements. Okay. So we load it and then we have to build an, build an index for this first. So we just load the data first and that's the first thing what we can do with a Llama index loading. This is a very, very simple thing, but uh, it can be scaled up to even bigger projects. And yeah, we can build an SQL index from that. So we have that all, we have a lot of uh, functions like that for different data structures, for a different, for different querying, for all of that. And I'm, I'm not going to get into all of that, but you can understand that it's under all of these umbrellas of loading and indexing and querying, right? And of, of course, they recently added evaluating too. Um, and you can even evaluate your LLM applications with this. Um, we won't get into that. We'll mostly focus on these three for now. Yep. Um, so we built uh, an SQL index with that, with the city stats. All right, now we'll uh, build a vector index and we can, we, we're gonna build a separate one for each city. Um, but yeah, we don't, we'll just, because that's simpler, we just do that. So, yep. So we define uh, this SQL tool. You, uh, you don't need to. You don't need to worry about what it exactly means. So our main goal is to convert. So if we give a query, it should be able to decide whether like it should be able to create an SQL query and then return it. Uh, generate the SQL query and return the data using the SQL query. All right. So uh, this is a description. All right. We just give it. Okay. And just uh, run that. And then we'll define this uh, query engine. So it has this uh, SQL tools plus vector tools. That's this query engine, which is composed of uh, this vector tools. And if you just ask anything about the city, then this should help. And if you want to have any details uh, about this, then we'll use the SQL tool, right? Um, that's the definitions we put for both of them. And that is encompassing both of that, uh, like a hybrid thing is our query engine. So that is why it's routing, right? It's either sending it to the SQL tool or the vector tool, right? So yeah, we can just give it a query which city has the highest population. Um, and you get this response. Yeah with the population of this. And uh, you also get the SQL query here, select city name population from city order by population. Yeah. So they generate, they go this SQL query directly from here. Um, this this is quite useful uh, if you think about it. Yep. Uh, and then if you, just for a response, this, this is what you get. Okay. And if you ask it a question like this, where it is of the form, um, it's useful 
for us answering semantic questions about city right so this is a semantic question tell me about the historical museum in uh, the city which is berlin so this is what you get as a response um and if you just uh, filter it out filter the junk out of that and then we get this uh, clean response and this is not based on an sql query all right uh, there is several things which you can do with uh, llama index and i'll give you a couple of more examples uh, of what we can do in much more detail in the coming videos um i hope you got a simple introduction to llama index um simply put it just access access an interface between your large language models and uh, what whatever you get whatever things you want to connect it with like other data mainly so you want to connect unstructured structured or semi structured data to your large language model uh, and even other things like llama index or other frameworks which you want to connect with the large language model llama index is uh, really useful and it's really good to know too so yeah uh, that's it for this video i'll uh, see you in the next thank you